Hey everyone, welcome to Easy Nursing. The channel is dedicated to bringing you NCLEX reviews, general nursing tips, and practice question videos. Today we're going to be talking about COPD and we're going to be doing a few NCLEX practice questions. So let's dive into it. So the patient with chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder is receiving discharge instructions regarding medications. Which of the following is correct regarding prednisone? All right, so this question is about prednisone. Okay, patients with COPD have trouble breathing, and one of the medicines that they could take is prednisone. What prednisone does is it's a steroid that decreases inflammation around the lungs. It also can be used inflammation around the body, but for them, they take it for the lungs. So it's a systemic steroid. So which is correct? So which of these is true regarding prednisone? The medicine should be taken for one week at a high dose, then discontinued. So let's reread that. One week at a high dose, then discontinued. So that's showing like an abrupt stop. One thing you need to know about prednisone is you do not stop it abruptly. The reason being is your body naturally is producing steroids, and when you take prednisone, you're, it's increasing the levels of that steroid. When your body sees this, it stops making its own. So if you were to suddenly stop making your, uh, taking prednisone, your body wouldn't be producing any steroids for, for at least for a couple days. And at that point, you won't have enough steroids. And so you're going to have a sudden crash. So this is going to be incorrect. When people discharge on prednisone, they will be on it uh, at a high dose that will taper off maybe every three or four days. They will decrease, you know, from one tab, you know, maybe two tabs for four days and then one tab for four days, half a tab for four days, and then stop. So make sure you always taper prednisone off. All right, prednisone. The medicine may lower blood sugar, so increase intake of carbs. That's going to be, it says here, lower blood sugar. That's incorrect. So I told you it's a steroid. Think of steroids, fight or flight reflex, okay? It's telling your body, I need to fight. I need the energy. So it increases your blood sugar in your body. So it doesn't lower your blood sugars, it increases it. And sometimes it increases it high enough, the patient needs to really watch how much carbs they're eating and almost temporarily be on a diabetic diet. All right, prednisone. The medicine is taken by inhaler. That's going to be incorrect. These patients are going to leave on pill form prednisone. In the hospital, steroids similar to prednisone can be done IV, but definitely not an inhaler. Okay, the medicine decreases inflammation of the airways. That's the, I told you in the beginning, that is why you give prednisone. It decreases inflammation. So for this, the correct answer will be D. All right, what's next? Which statement is correct regarding portable oxygen for home use? Okay, so which is correct? So the patient may, able, be, may be able to smoke at home with the oxygen. Big fat no-no. What you need to know about oxygen whether it's in a hospital or at home, do not be around uh, open flame or any kind of fire or, or heat source because uh, the oxygen is necessary. Oxygen is necessary for fire. Well, when it's concentrated like this, it can cause the fire to erupt very quickly. Um, I've seen horror stories, uh, videos about patients smoking um, while with oxygen. The cigarette lights up and it burns their entire face. So uh, no smoking with oxygen, even if it's portable at home. And do not just take it and put it on your forehead. That's just as dangerous. All right, the next one. The patient will not be able to leave the house. All right, that's going to be incorrect because this is portable oxygen. It's portable so that they can go around and, and do the activities of their normal lives, go to a grocery store or to the bank. The patient should use a water-based lip moisturizer. So this says water-based, that must be important. We'll come back to that. Last one, D, the patient will have to stop by the oxygen equipment company twice a week for refills. They might, but here's the thing, will have to, that's where it kind of spikes the question. That's not necessary. Most of these oxygen companies deliver oxygen to the home for the patient, and so it's typically delivered. Uh, the patient probably could stop by and pick them up, but do they, they don't have to. So let's talk about C and why C is going to be our correct answer. They should use water-based lip moisturizer. Remember I told you how oxygen can make flammable things more flammable? Well, oil-based uh, moisturizers 
are flammable. So you want to decrease the risk of anything causing flame around the oxygen. So you want to use a water-based lip moisturizer. And that's why lip moisturizers in the hospital are typically water-based. And they usually probably don't work as well as we're used to. We're all used to the oil-based. Next question. So the patient with COPD is at an increased risk for right-sided heart failure also known as core pulmonal. Which statement gives correct explanation of this risk? So what, I th what should be wording here is, why are they at increased risk for right-sided heart failure? This is a, an A&P question. Okay, so let's, uh, let's, let's just talk about it first. So you got the lungs and you got the heart. So the right side of the heart pumps blood to the lungs, then the lungs Return, uh, the blood is returned from the lungs to the left side of the heart and then to the body. So when you have COPD, you have problems with the lungs. So you're able to get blood from the right side of the heart to the lungs, but it's having difficulty moving beyond that point to the left side. So what happens is there's a backup in the lungs because of all the damage to the lungs, and this backup causes blood to back up to the right side of the heart. Let's look at the answer choices. The decreased blood oxygen levels result in the heart becoming tired easier. There may be some truth to that, but that's not the rationale or the, the true reasoning. Um, true reasoning would be there's a backup of blood at the site of the lungs from decreased uh, blood flow. So let's look at that. Chronic use of albuterol elevates the heart rate until the heart can no longer compensate. Well, there's a little truth to everything. Albuterol can elevate the heart rate. Um, however, this is not going to result in heart failure, at least unless the patient some, for some reason was tachycardic, got a heart, uh, heart attack, and then develops heart failure. But that's look, reading into the answers. Do not do that. All right. Uh, the lungs retain gases and enlarge this exerting pressure on the heart. Well, it's true that uh, COPD patients have a barrel chest, um, but that's uh, in part to holding on the gases and and their muscles growing so they could try to breathe better, um, there's that, they're not going to be having that pressure on the heart. So here's C. This is going to be the correct answer. The increased vascular resistance in the lungs results in volume back up to the right side of the heart. Remember, I told you it goes from the right side of the heart to the lungs. It meets the vascular resistance because of all the COPD issues, and so it back, stays backed up in the right side of the heart, causing right-sided heart failure. All right, so there's our correct answer. All right, that was a quick one here. I make videos like this all the time, so if you like uh, my videos, please subscribe to Easy Nursing. If you have any comments, please comment below and maybe like the video. Hey, thanks a lot.